Good day, guys. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin, and I'm an American living in beautiful Sydney, Australia. This video is so, so long overdue, you guys. I'm finally getting to the reverse culture shocks of what it's like moving to Australia, going back to the States to visit family, and then coming back to Australia. In fact, this list was so long, I have to break this video up into two parts. So today we're getting into the first 10 huge reverse culture shocks that I faced. So if you want to see what it's like from an American's perspective going back to the States after living abroad for a year and a half, grab a bicky, grab a cuppa, and let's get right into this video. So when we went back to the States, obviously we didn't visit every single city in every single state. Mark and I went to Houston, we spent most of our time in Philly, my hometown, and we spent a couple days in New York. So just know that what I'm talking about is from a very, very limited perspective, you guys. There is no possible way to cover what it is like all across the U.S. And the first culture shock that I saw was the homelessness situation, particularly in Philly. Now, walking around the Sydney CBD, yes, we do see homeless people out on the street, but not even close to the extent that I saw them in Philly. I'm talking every single city block, we ran into at least one person who looked like they were homeless, and I'm not saying they were wearing kind of ratty clothes or just looked a little bit down on their luck. I mean, it is very clear that they had nowhere else to go. In fact, there are some situations where it actually felt a little bit scary for us, which is something I never had to deal with over here in Sydney. I forgot what it's like actually being a little bit afraid of some homeless people. Not because they're all bad or because they've got a screw loose, but some of them look downright dangerous. In fact, we had one guy with a switchblade who looked like he was trying to clean it off and he came up to us, now granted it was closed, but was holding it out to us like, do you guys know how to dry this off? Do you know how to dry this off? Random homeless guy with a switchblade. <laughs> okay, not exactly what I was expecting my first week back in my home country. The homelessness situation in Philly has gotten so out of hand, and we're fortunate enough that in Sydney, it's not nearly as bad as it is over in the States. Granted, it's still a problem, it's still an issue over here, but not even close to the extent that it is back in my home city. I know this is going to start off as like a little bit of a negative list, but the second thing I noticed was just how dirty Philly is. New York, a little bit too, to be honest. Houston was bright and sunny and big, beautiful blue skies. We didn't notice it nearly as much there, but granted we were only there for one day. In Philly, it is such a dirty, gritty, grimy city. I mean, the streets aren't cleaned at all, the buildings aren't cleaned at all, there's graffiti everywhere, and everywhere you go you feel like you're walking in dirt. It's tough to explain, but unless you've seen how beautiful and clean and pristine the CBD is here in Sydney, it's really tough to explain to Americans just how different it is. You have a couple of nicer areas, but even then the upkeep in those isn't all that great if I'm gonna be honest. The sidewalks look dirty, the streets look dirty, it's like the buildings are covered in some kind of grime, it's so difficult to explain. And that doesn't take away from some of the beautiful architecture Philly has to offer. Philly is an incredible, historic city. But the reality is, if you're spending time there and you're not just in the touristy places, it's kind of a dirty city to be in. Number three was a little bit heartbreaking for me because I remember walking around pre-pandemic and Philly was a huge, thriving, bustling city. And walking around the city, it was about a third of the offices and the shops were for rent or for lease. COVID hit so many small businesses so hard over in the States. And we're definitely seeing the aftermath of that now three years into slightly post-pandemic. I remember going to this restaurant for lunch or going shopping in this place on my lunch break and so many of those stores just aren't around anymore or they've completely moved way further down the street. It is so sad seeing so many places closed up. Walking around Sydney CBD, I do see for lease signs and for rent signs, but not nearly as much as I do. It still feels like Sydney is thriving, it's bustling. Whereas in Philly, I don't have that feeling anymore. It's like so many places have closed up and so many offices have people working from home now that the city's like kind of starting to die out a little bit. Number four, and I know Aussies are gonna get on me for this one, but there's an abundance of fast food places over in the States. I know America is notorious for its fast food. Everybody loves to talk about the fat American stereotype where someone's just sitting there eating a Big Mac. 
but the truth is there are so many fast food places it's so easy to access places like mcdonald's and taco bell and wendy's and kfc just everywhere and in a lot of cases they're actually cheaper options than shopping at other food places or even cooking food at home yourself so there is an abundance of fast food places over in the states it was almost overwhelming the choices that we had in the limited amount of time that we were there number five this one kind of gets under my skin is rude uber drivers i've dealt with a couple like kind of rude ish ones over here in sydney but it felt like nine out of ten of the uber drivers we had over in the states whether it be in philly or houston or new york were just rude people i'm not saying you need to have the best customer service if you're riding an uber i'm sure it's not the most fun exciting job out there but the level of rudeness that we faced people were just flat out ignoring us if we were asking them questions we've had people who just gave us dirty looks from the front seat of the car like we were doing something wrong sitting there and having a regular conversation like we we're supposed to just sit there in silence for 20 minutes i've never had that experience over here in australia it felt like we were inconveniencing them that we needed a ride somewhere when that's quite literally the job that you volunteered for signed up for, are getting paid for. After being home, that one really got under my skin and I pointed it out to Mark when we got back. I'm like, at least the Uber drivers here, granted some of them are not the best drivers here, but at least they're nice. You can't say that about a lot of Uber drivers that we ran into over in the States. Number six is customer service people in the States hate chit chat. They don't want to deal with small talk. They want to get you whatever it is you need and then have you move on so that way they can help the next customer. Especially in Philly. I'm not necessarily proud of this, but we've been voted the rudest city in the States, which kind of feels like getting a trophy for last place in a beauty pageant, if I'm going to be honest. It is not something you really want to be proud of. But I can definitely see where they're coming from because people in Philly do not have time for small chit chat, small talk. They're not really the friendliest people you're going to run into, at least if you're a tourist. Same thing in New York as well. It's tell me what you need so I can give it to you and then be on our way. If Mark tried to start a little bit of chit chat with some of the customer service people, some of them looked at him like he was an alien. Like, why are you still talking to me? Or why are you trying to talk to me? I just want to do my job. So just know that if you're going over there, uh, that's kind of the norm over there. That's kind of the culture, especially in Philly. Not that they're necessarily rude. They just don't want to deal with chit chat and small talk. Uh, number seven is Americans hate comparisons between America and any other country, even if it's in their favor. Americans just get so caught up, shocked, taken aback if you bring up any sort of comparison between America and Australia, or America and any other country for that matter. And I'm not even talking on the political hot button issues like healthcare and education, gun reform, nothing like that. Now, I'm talking about like small little things like how cuts of meat are different in both countries, especially when it comes to steak. I'm talking about how we don't have pennies over here in Australia and our money looks completely different. I'm talking small little comparisons. Anytime you bring up any comparison, Americans kind of get their back up a little bit, even if you're talking about something in America's favor. Americans just don't like to hear comparisons between America and other countries. And I don't know if it's because we're so used to this American-centric mindset over in the States, or if because when we're compared to other countries, it's often in a negative light, so we automatically get put in that defensive position. But Americans just don't like hearing about other countries for the most part. Number eight was always being mindful of where my and Mark's wallets were. Now, the places we went to, Philly, Houston, and New York, are not major pickpocket cities. Does it happen there? Absolutely. But is it a common problem like it is in some places in Europe? No. But walking around, I would find myself occasionally checking the inside of my purse or looking down at the bulge in Mark's pants, which I know does sound... Yeah, I know how that sounds. But checking to make sure that his wallet was still there. Get your mind out of the gutter, you guys. I was always just a little bit worried that something was going to happen. Somebody would grab something if we had it out of my purse or his wallet for too long. I was just always worried whenever we had to pull our wallets out, our money out. I've never had that feeling over here in Australia where I thought somebody would rush up and grab my credit card or grab the cash out of my hand. 
for some reason I've always worried about that happening, especially over in New York when you're in so many big touristy areas with all the hustle and bustle and a lot of people. I always felt a little bit nervous about us having to take our card or cash out anywhere and I was constantly checking to see whether or not Mark and I had our wallets on us. Which is something I've never had to worry about when I was walking around the Sydney CBD. Number nine is the die-hard love for baseball over there. I've admitted it on quite a few videos, I'm not a baseball fan, I'm not a baseball girl, even though I was raised in a family that absolutely loves sports, loved baseball, and particularly loved the Philadelphia Phillies. Mark and I went to a Phillies game when we were over here, and I forgot just how exciting it is to go to a baseball game over in the States. The fans there are incredible. Philly has some of the best sports fans in the country, and I'm just going to say on this channel, in the world, when it comes to some sports. The diehard love for baseball is something that can quite literally take your breath away when you're actually in the stadiums, surrounded by all that energy and all the buzz and the excitement. Even though baseball is not the most exciting sport out there, I've said it before, I will say it again, I'm not a huge fan of baseball. Actually being there really does show you the love of the sport. It is old school classic Americana. You feel like you're somehow a part of history and something bigger than yourself when you're at a baseball game. And that is such an incredible feeling. If you ever go over to the States, even if you don't like baseball, go to a major league baseball game just to get that experience. It is incredible. And the last one for this part one video is that the American national anthem is absolutely beautiful and so incredibly easy to fuck up. I am saying, you guys, America's National Anthem is probably the most beautiful anthem I have ever heard. And I'm not saying that as American. I've heard Australia's National Anthem. I've heard dozens of national anthems. I've even heard some of them converted into English. And the lyrics, just the entire musical score behind the American National Anthem is beautiful. If you've ever had the chance, stop and listen to it, read the lyrics. I know it sounds like something that you would definitely roll your eyes at in America and talk about how incredible the American National Anthem is. It really is, and when it's done well, it can bring tears to your eyes. But it's a very tricky song, and it's incredibly easy for people to mess up, whether they're singing, whether it's playing it on an instrument, especially when they're singing. It's so easy to mess it up, and it is so frustrating when that happens because it's such a beautiful song with so much potential and it's very, very, very easy for some people to completely butcher it. When we went to the Phillies game, they actually had, I think it was like Miss Pennsylvania and then Miss Teen Pennsylvania. Miss Teen Pennsylvania was playing the violin, Miss Pennsylvania was actually singing. It was haunting, you guys. They were incredible. It was beautiful. And it actually brought a tear to Mark's eyes. I was getting a little bit emotional, not just because of the song that I grew up with, but I was also like, oh my god, this is the first time I'm hearing the American National Anthem in person in like four years. So it was quite an overwhelming and incredible experience. But the American National Anthem is beautiful and so incredibly easy to fuck up. So that's it for this list, you guys. Did anything in this list surprise you? Is there anything you think is going to be on part two? Make your predictions because that video is going to be coming out next week. Let me know down below what reverse culture shocks do you think are going to come up in part two. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I so appreciate the support, you guys, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. homeless guy with a switchblade. <laughs> okay, not exactly what I was expecting my first week back in my home country. Number three was a little bit heartbreaking for me because I remember walking around pre-pandemic and Philly was a huge, thriving, bustling city. Beautiful and so incredibly easy to fuck up.